Okay, so now we're going to continue with our look at graphs and continue getting information from a graph. So the first few are just review. Uh, there's a hole right here. So you might want to pause the video and see if you can state the domain and the range. But this graph, I'm going to say that it is negative 5 to 2 with parentheses because that is just the position. Really, it should say 2 undefined. There is not really a point there. There's a hole. And then the range would be the set of y coordinates. So the lowest y coordinate is negative 7, and it goes all the way up to 3.38. Try number 2. All right, so I added these arrows. So this goes on forever and ever. So this domain would be negative infinity to infinity because there's no stopping all the x's from left to right. The range, there is a minimum at the lowest y coordinate would be negative 4 and it goes up to infinity. Okay, you might want to try these. So assume that those are arrows there. So this domain would be whole parentheses, again that's just the location, negative 2, and then it goes the x values stop at 2, and that is a point, so that would be a bracket. The range, the lowest y value is not at negative 2, but that's what we call an open boundary. So we have parentheses negative 2 all the way up to 4.25 bracket. All right, here, this is absolute value. This is domain of negative infinity to infinity. And the range has a minimum. That is a point there. Even when you don't see a dot, that's, a, that's on the graph, so that's a point. So that would be bracket 0 to infinity. Okay, now on the back, we have more. Reading the graph, it should be review. Again, this is a hole right here. So this really technically is 2 and then undefined. There is no y coordinate for that 2. Um, okay, so f of 1, you have to go over to the right um, when x is 1 and you find out that y is negative 1. f of negative 4 would be 0. Here again, this is an output input. I can draw a horizontal line through y equals negative 3 to help me see that there is only one x value and it's somewhere between negative 4 and negative 5, a little closer to negative 4, so good approximation maybe would be negative 4.3. And then again, x such that that's y equals 0, draw a little horizontal line through y equals 0 and there are two x values, one at negative 4 and one at 0, but not 2, because there's a hole there. All right, you try this one. Okay, did you get f of 1 is 2, f of negative 1, how did you handle that? This is a square root function. And at negative 1, it's not defined. So that was, would just be D and E. And um, this one, y equals 4. So horizontal line through y equals 4, I get x is 4. And again, when you find x such that y equals negative 1, there is no function down here when y is a negative 1. So there is no x value. That gives you a y value equal to negative 1. Okay, now for something new, we're going to look at inequalities. And we're going to start where we're just going to look at inequalities where it's greater than or less than 0. Okay, so a function is greater than 0 when its graph is above the x-axis and less than 0 when it's below the x-axis. So we have this graph here and we want to answer the question on what interval is f of x greater than 0? 
So we have to understand what this is asking. All right, so basically when you are asked a question like that, the wording can be different, but you want to know where the y's are greater than zero. And again, x is the input. So when it says what interval, it means what are the x's? What are the x's that make the y's greater than zero? Okay, so what you can do if it's just greater than zero, here is where y equals zero. All right, see so y equals zero there. So where y is greater than zero, here's all the y values. See, this is the y-axis. Here's all the y values that are greater than zero. Okay, but we don't want to write down the, the y values. We want to write down the x's that make that happen, right? So that happens. See here where it says negative 2, 0? That's when x is negative 2, y equals 0. Well, we don't want equal to 0. We want greater than. So there's an open hole there. And then all these y values happen, they're dependent upon these x values. These are the x values that make the y values be above that graph. And same thing over here. At 1, 0, when x is 1, that's when y equals 0. So we have the hole there because that would not be true. If you put 1, 1 um, gives you 0. We want uh, y to be greater than 0. So, but all of these x values make are what make these y's be above. All right, so then we have to write that down. So on what interval is f of x greater than zero? That would be negative infinity to negative two parentheses union parentheses one to zero. All right, let's try it again. This time where on what interval is f of x less than zero? You have to understand what's being asked of you. That's y is less than zero. We want to know the x's that make that, the inputs that make the y's be less than zero. Well, the y's are less than zero when it's below the x-axis because that's where all the negative y values are. So we want to know the x's that make it happen. So this time the interval would be from the x's starting from negative 2, but with a parentheses, because that's where it equals 0, to 1. All right, so you try the next one. Determine the intervals on which the following functions are greater than 0 and the intervals on which they are less than 0. So f of x is greater than 0 on the following interval. Well, it, x is greater than zero right here, so parentheses negative four to zero. Union, x is greater than zero, I mean, y is greater than zero here. I meant to say y. y is greater than zero here when x is from negative, from seven all the way forever to infinity. So these, this is where the y's are greater than zero, and the x's that make that happen are here and here. All right, where is f of x less than zero? Okay, that happens when the y's are below, when the graph is below the x-axis, because that's where y equals zero. And so these y values are negative. Okay, so we locate the y values that are below, but we want to answer the question, the, what, what are the x values that make that happen? So that would be these x values, these x values. And so that would be from negative infinity to negative 4, union 0 to 7. All right, this one is weird because this is a weird solid line there, but the origin is right down here, and that's why. Okay, so f of x is greater than zero when the function is above the x-axis, and that's everything. So all the x's from negative infinity to infinity will make the y's greater than zero. So f of x is less than zero, never.
Okay, so now if you understood that, then we can change this around a little bit. Instead of dealing with just greater than zero or less than zero, we can do um, something like this. Write these solutions to the following inequalities using interval notation. Again, the wording has changed. But remember, this question is asking you, what are the x's that make the y be greater than negative 3? What are the x's that make the y be greater than or equal to negative 3? And so forth and so on. So they all have negative 3. So that's where we want to start. First, we want to graph the line y equals negative 3. All right, so that would be 1, 2, 3 down. And then this is the line y equals negative 3. Now, just like before, if we want to know where the y values are greater than negative 3, that would be all the, the where the graph is above that line. So, graph is above that line right here and right here. But we need to know this intersection here. This is the x value, the first x value, and this is the second x value. So if we just kind of go up to the x-axis, you can see that's really close to negative 5, so maybe um, so number 1, maybe it's mm, negative 4.8 to maybe 1.8 union, and then this x might be something like four point um, six point one to infinity. But the good news is we now know these values. This is negative x equals negative four point eight. We said that was one point eight and we said that was four point one. So now all of these answers are going to have these intersections of where x equals negative 3. And depending on what the sign says, we can change it around. So the only thing that's going to change for number 2 is this time it says greater than or equal to. So these are where it equals negative 3. So instead of parentheses, we would have a bracket to include those values where it equals negative 3. And we never put a bracket on infinity. So that's the only way 1 and 2 are going to be different. All right, now if we switch it around and erase this, we still need these x values where it equals negative 3, and we'll deal with it. But now we're going to say, well, where's the x, the y, the y's less than negative 3? That would be where it's below this y equals negative 3. And so then we have to translate that very vertical, those are y's, we have to translate to the x's that make that happen. So from negative infinity to negative 4.8, parentheses, union, 1.8 to 4.1, the y's are less than negative 3. And again, the only way, uh, way that 4 would change is now it says less than or equal to negative 3. So we get to include those intersections where they were negative 4. Point a equals negative 3, so we have a bracket. Union bracket 1.8 to 4.1 bracket. All right, so pause the video and try this second one. All right, did you first step 0 draw y equals 2? All right, then that intersection. That x value is, looks like negative 2.5, and that x value looks like 1.5. So number one, f of x is greater than 2 when x is all the places where it's greater than that y equals 2. So from negative infinity to 2.5, parentheses union 1.5 to infinity. All right, in number two, the only thing that's different is it says f of x is greater than or equal to 2. So that would be negative infinity to 2.5, bracket, union, bracket, 1.5 to infinity. All right, so now the next 
or where is it that y, where the y is less than 2. So that would be anywhere where the graph is below the line y equals 2. And that happens, here's where it intersects. So that happens when x is between negative 2.5 and 1.5. And then where it's less than or equal to 2, that happens bracket negative 2.5. 1.5. So if I could say anything about what we've been doing, uh, these answers to the intervals the, or the solutions that make these functions greater than or less than, these are all x values. It's always the answer, it's always the x values that make the y values happen. All right, the next thing we're going to learn about graphs is we're going to learn about finding the zeros of the function. So if I ask you to find the zeros of the function, what that means is zeros is another word for the x-intercepts. What are the x-intercepts? The x-intercepts, that's where the graph intersects the x-axis. Okay, so if I wanted to identify the zeros of the function, writing them as ordered pairs in order from the smallest x value to the largest x value, that's just me helping you practice what WebAssign is going to want. You have to pay attention. We want ordered pairs. And so the, x, the zeros are the x-intercepts. Right? And so that x-intercept is negative 4, 0. And that x-intercept is 0, 0, because see, this is where y equals 0 on this x-axis. And then that x-intercept is 7, 0. And we would enter it into Excel, smallest x value to largest x value. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is increasing and decreasing functions. So look, definition here, a function is increasing if whenever the y value is greater than the first y value, as you move left to right, the function is increasing. So it's easy if I visualize it. So if we go left to right, if I, this is my x-axis, my y-axis. If my y values are getting bigger and bigger as I go left to right, that's an increasing function. All right? So a line with a positive slope is, is an increasing function. So a curve, even if it was a curve and it had a slight curve, that's still increasing because the y values are getting higher and higher as I go left to right. So when you're asked, just like before, if you're asked where a function is increasing, you're asked, you're asked, when you're asked when the, where the y is getting bigger and bigger, get increasing, then you're, you're going to answer with x values because the x's are the inputs. So a function is increasing means to state the x values that are making that happen. So it's always going to be x values. All right, the function is decreasing whenever the y's are getting smaller and smaller as you uh, move left to right. So this is a decreasing function. As I go to the left, from the left to the right, as I sign my name left to right, the y values are going smaller and smaller. Okay, so to answer the questions, here's the graph. Estimate the intervals on which this polynomial, and I graphed it, is increasing in the intervals on which the function is decreasing. So we want to answer with x values, okay? So but just like before, you have to find where the function, let's do increasing first. We have to find where the y values are increasing. So they increase here, as I go left to right, and also here, all right? So those two areas, or where the y's are increasing, right? But we want to state the x values that make that happen. So it's really hard because you're real vertical, but what's happening is this x value is negative 2.393. And this is x equals negative 
1.24. So this is the interval of x's right here. So we have to make this vertical change. Those are the y's, but we have to state the x's. That's the interval that's making the function increase. So it's increasing from negative 2.393 to negative 1.234. And it's also increasing here. So we're just going to write down the x's from when x is negative 0.285 to when x is 0.713. So you have to make yourself not pay attention to any of the y values when you're stating your answer. Okay. Now it's decreasing. This is when it gets really, it messes with your brain because it is decreasing right here and it's super vertical, but not quite vertical. Te technically it's still a little bit diagonal. So these y values are decreasing here and then these y values are decreasing here and they're decreasing here. Okay, so, but we want to state the x values that are making that happen. So, again, negative 2.393 all the way forever and ever here. And it's also decreasing from here to here. And it's also decreasing when x is from here all the way forever. So we have to translate these very almost vertical lines down to the x-axis, okay? So it would be decreasing from negative infinity to when x is negative 2.393, union, right, starts here, negative 1.234, that x value, to this x value, which is negative 0.285, union, starts here, this x value, 0.713 to infinity. You have to make yourself make that change. And notice that I'm not including any of these lowest points. And the reason is because at these low local mins and local maxes, or we're going to talk about that, that's technically, the point is neither, the graph is neither decreasing or increasing there. So we don't include those. It's always going to be parentheses for these increasing and decreasing questions. Okay, we're at number eight. So the last thing we're going to talk about when we're reading, getting information of the on the graph is we're going to talk about maximums and minimums. And there's two types. There's local maximums and minimums, and there's absolute maximums and minimums. And this is where the definition matters. So a local maximum occurs um, when the graph of f changes from increasing to decreasing. So we just learned that. So whenever you have a change from increasing to decreasing, you have a local max. All right? So this question is, this, this is the location, x and a y, right? But you want to make sure you understand this. The maximum is really just the y coordinate. So there is a local maximum of 2.626. Now the location is the x when x is 1.528. So just like before, this x is making that y happen and that y is a local maximum. All right, a local minimum occurs when there is a change from decreasing to increasing. So, here you have a change from decrease and increasing, and there is the location of the local minimum. So there is a local minimum of the y, negative 0.226, when x is 1.528. So if I just ask you what, a lo what the local minimum is, you just tell me the y. But a lot of times on the test, we'll say, state it as a coordinate. Now, let's make sure we understand how important these definitions are. And, you know, just in layman's terms, a local minimum is kind of like these little little mountain peaks and valleys. So a peak in the valley, that's where your local max and mins are. Somebody might say, well, that is a, a minimum in that area. But if you go by the definition, there is no change from decreasing to increasing. It just starts out increasing. So that is not the local minimum. Okay, but it is something. So we got another definition. This absolute maximum and absolute minimum. 
Okay, so um, if a y, if a c, that's a y, is greater than or equal to all the other y's for x in all the domain of f, then f of c is what's known as an absolute maximum. And if this y, specific f of c y, is less than or equal to all the other y's, for x in the domain of f, then f of c is an absolute minimum. Okay, so here, this y value, this point right here, looks like it's a negative 4, negative 6. Okay? This, this y value is smaller than all the other y values on the graph. That's what we call an absolute minimum. Okay, so the absolute minimum is negative 6. It occurs when x is negative 4. What is the absolute maximum? Well, that's not an absolute maximum because there are y values higher than it. That looks suspicious. That's a whole. So because that's a whole, you don't have an absolute maximum. If that wasn't a whole, if that was colored in, then that would be an absolute maximum. Okay, so you can try these, and the word here, class by all extrema, okay, what that means is um, find the local mins, the local max, the absolute min that they exist, and the absolute max that they exist. And then one more thing I forgot um, right here. Because of these definitions, absolute mins and maxes can occur at endpoints, but again, uh, local mins and maxes can't occur at endpoints because they have to change from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. All right, so try these. So hopefully you got the local min at negative 3.2. When x is, uh, when y is negative 3.2, there's a local min also um, when uh, at y is 0. So the local mins... Um, are the y values. If you put it as coordinates, and that's probably what we're going to do on the test, you might say this is the location of the local min. This is the location of the local min. It's just a little, a little easier to write. All right, we have a local max of 0 0.4939. 0 0.439, or in other words, the ordered pair. 0.75.439, but that is the local max. Absolute min, that's the lowest y value of all the y's, so that's negative 3.2. So local min can be an absolute min, or if you stated the location, negative 2, negative 3.2, that's an absolute min. And we have to assume that's going on forever and ever, so there are no absolute maxes because these y values are going to keep big, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. If you try the second one, let's see, we have a local min. I'm just going to do ordered pairs here because it's a lot easier. At 1.694 comma negative 1.26. And that is not a local min because it doesn't change from decreasing to increasing. We do have a local max at negative 2. 0.361, 2 0.075. Um, and that's it for local maxes. Do we have an absolute min? Well, that looks like the lowest point. So again, you can have local mins be absolute mins. And then we do have an absolute max on this one right here. That's the highest y value, 3.2. And that occurs when x is 4, y is 3.2. So the y's are the actual mins and maximums, but it's typical we can just put the order pair. It's, help, it's a little easier to write. I just do this just to, just to emphasize that technically the y values of the function are the maxes and the mins, but you'll be asked just to state the ordered pairs. Okay, and so the, the last page is just for you to practice. So I'm going to pause and work on the key and you can turn me back on and check and see how you did. 
Okay, I just did mine. So y'all just hold it here. You can check your work. And if you miss some and you find your error, then you can pause again and try some more. Uh, but I have, it's increasing from negative three, even though there's a hole there. You got a parenthesis, so it doesn't matter. From negative three to negative 1.309 union, 3.309 to five. Decreasing from negative 1.309 to 3.309. Got a local minimum of negative 12.317. Local max of positive 12.317, but I wrote the ordered pair. There is an absolute minimum of negative 12.317 and an absolute max of 12.317. Second one, increasing from negative, when x is negative 10 to 3.333. This function is decreasing when x is from negative infinity to negative 10, union 3.333 to infinity. There is a local, a local min at the negative 10, 0 location. There's a local max at the 3.333, 23.704 location. And again, these are, you can add the arrows. This goes on forever and ever, so there's no absolute max or absolute min. All right, the third one, it's increasing when x is from negative 3.606 to 0, union 3.606 to infinity. It's decreasing from negative infinity to negative 3.606 using union 0 to 3.3, 3.606. There is a local min of negative 1.44. And there's, if that local min is happening in two locations. So the ordered pair helps tell you that. There is a local max at the ordered pair 0, 0 0.25. And since there were two locations, the absolute lowest y of all the y's is the y negative 1.44. It occurs in two locations when x is plus or minus 3.606. So that's another way you can write it. There is no absolute maximum because that function goes, the y values go, or heading to infinity. And then lastly, there's a hole there. It doesn't matter. It's increasing on the interval from 2 to 5 and decreasing on the interval from negative 5 to 2. These are x values, not ordered pairs. So the, the context, that we've, we've run out of symbols, so interval notation can look like ordered pairs, so you have to know that when we're talking about increasing and decreasing, we're talking about interval note, the x values. The local min occurs when x is 2 and y is 0. That's the local min, that's 0. There is no local max because... We don't have a change from decreasing to increasing. The absolute min, again, is 2, 0, and we do not have an absolute max. That would be it, but that's a whole. So that doesn't count as an absolute max. All right, that's it for that lesson.